Scandal wasn't sure what to do, and now she was looking behind her to see that there wasn't any room to maneuver, and this car was barreling down on her like it wasn't going to stop. The windows were black tinted, so she couldn't see the driver, only the loud rumbling of the engine making this a death trap in the making. Unfortunately, Scandal felt like she was paralyzed, and there was nothing that she could do but watch as her imminent death was coming upon her. She didn't believe all those stories about things happening in slow motion, but recently she had become quite the believer. This was just another one of those times that she felt like her life was in danger, and having the man attack her at her friend's place was a wake-up call of monumental importance. She never thought for one moment that she couldn't find herself on the receiving end of somebody's wrath, especially considering that this was a story and nothing more. Then again, this was somebody that was obviously threatened by what she was doing and was now taking action to make sure that she wasn't going to find out their deep, dark secret. As this car was getting closer, she flashed on a few memories of childhood, those that were friendly and happy ones. It was funny, but she thought that she would gravitate towards those memories that were more influential in her life, like the reason why she wanted to be a journalist in the first place. That wasn't what was happening, and she was seeing playing ball in a field with her friends, walking home and having her first kiss by Andrew Johnson on the back porch of her house, and losing her virginity at the age of 18 with a wonderful senior that found her to be desirable and interesting all at the same time. In her paralyzed state, she didn't hear somebody screaming for her to get down, but she could barely move her head away from the burning image of this black car about to take her life at a very early age. I said, get the fuck down or you're going to die. The voice sounded familiar, but it didn't register with her at all, as if her mind was a jumble of information and there was no room for anything that didn't make any sense. Suddenly, she felt the air being pushed out of her lungs and her body becoming airborne, just as the sound of crunching metal was heard in her ears. She didn't know what was happening, only that this person had come to her rescue at the most opportune time. It was almost like they had forewarned knowledge of what was going to take place here, or maybe it was something even more sinister than that. It didn't matter, because she was just thankful that whoever this was had decided to intervene on her behalf. She crashed against a nearby car, flipping up onto the hood and rolling across it with the momentum of the person on top of her. They continued to move together in unison until landing heavily on the pavement and against the chain-link fence that was currently protecting them from any more harm. She could still hear the twisting and grinding of metal, and then underneath the car, she could see sparks of something that was sticking to the black car as it backed out of the parking lot and peeled down the street so fast that it was leaving behind black scorch marks in the pavement. You can get the fuck off me now and tell me what the hell is going on. She couldn't see who this person was, because whoever it was had been wearing a black face mask over her features. But then she raised the visor and she came face to face with her most questionable adversary, Sasha. I was driving by and I saw you about to become roadkill, and I thought it might be in my best interest to do something about it. I know that Deacon wouldn't like me standing back and letting this happen, even though a big part of me just didn't care what happened to you one way or the other. You should feel lucky that I even decided to do something, because I wasn't sure if I was going to or not. Sasha had no reason to tell her the truth, because doing so would only make her job harder to track Scandal wherever she wanted. Scandal could see that Sasha's arm was bleeding, and there was a slice along her leather jacket that most likely came from a jagged piece of metal. It didn't look like Sasha knew that she was injured and was only trying to push herself away from the tight confines of this vehicle and the chain-link fence that was digging into both of them. I don't think you came here out of the goodness of your heart, and I know that you would rather see me dead than help me. That begs the question, why would you even help me in the first place? It's not like you would have had to explain yourself to Deacon. He probably doesn't even know that you were out here, and you could have easily drove away and left all of this in your rearview mirror. She didn't want to start pulling at that band-aid, but she needed to know why this woman would put herself out for her when it was obvious from the very beginning that she didn't like her and wanted her gone by any measure. Sasha pulled herself up, but then she felt extreme pain radiating from her arm 